Good morning, everyone. We are ready for session four, which is the last session of this season. And um, we are ready to look at all the galleries. And we're going everywhere today, right, Franklin? Uh, it's, it's, um, we're, we're not going to England, but we're going to a few other places. We're not going to California. We're not going to Florida, but it's still pretty diverse. Yeah. So, well, that's what New Yorkers do in the summer. They all disperse. So let's start off in Brooklyn. This is the western coast of Brooklyn, which faces Manhattan. So from, from this venue, you can see the Statue of Liberty and really the whole lower New York skyline. So um, Franklin is just about to talk about the architecture here, which is from, I believe, the 1800s. This is uh, old, beer, old Beard Pier. So, Franklin, so why, is it, why, is it called, why is it called Beard? Uh, the family... Uh, who founded it was named Beard. Mm -hmm. okay. So here, do you hear me? Oh, that's better. Much better. Okay, okay good. The family that founded it was, um, right, I'm using an external microphone. I have to tell them that I know that. Okay, excuse us while we get this technical okay. thing settled. Right. <laughs> All right, this is a fabulous place because it has the, it has the arches and it has the old red brick it dates from about 1870. It's built out on a stone pier. It's not the only one. There are a few of them over there. And if you know the area around Williamsburg and Greenpoint, that has warehouses for the American Sugar Company, where uh, an artist had her exhibition, this is set up like that too. These are very vast, big loft-like spaces, and artists use them as for studios, and uh, they're also galleries, and we're going to go to a gallery that's in one of these spaces. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, they call it BWAC. So it stands for Brooklyn Waterfront Artist Coalition, mm -hmm. and they're having an exhibit called The Art of Coney Island, and it's actually only on the week, open on the weekends, but they make it into a whole event-driven activity because they have, you know, they're, they're obviously, they're doing um, Coney Island, there's a theme, so they'll have mermaids walking around and sword swallowers and all sorts of uh, exciting things. So it's definitely a destination to, to try to get to. And here you can get a closer up view of those windows that Frank, those arch windows that Franklin was talking about. But um, let's talk a little bit about Coney Island to get everybody in the mood. I think most of the people in our group are New Yorkers, but just in case, we'll we'll get into it. So this is the poster for the exhibition. You can see it has that carnival kind of feel to it. And mermaids are and sea life is a very big part of um, of the Coney Island Brooklyn area. So um, this is their poster. Now, this is a photograph of what Coney Island was long ago. This, this photograph is from 1930. And you could see, it wouldn't be considered politically correct now, but at the time they called them sideshows or freak shows. And you would pay your, your, your dime and you would walk in and see all these um, people with all sorts of physical differences. And uh, you can see just from looking at the picture um, what's uh, what's going on there. And it's fun to read some of the advertising too, like the, the person who's alive without a skull, for example. And, uh, you know, it's all uh, lowbrow entertainment. So the artists are really pop in their sensibility and they're responding to this. And mm -hmm. we're looking at some of the subjects that they might look at, which would be the ride, such as the cyclone, which is still there. And we have an artist doing a portrayal of that. Uh, the uh, parachute ride, the steeplechase, Chase is of really of memory, and uh, the uh, the beach scene, of course, with its crowding and so on, is a constant. Yeah, so these are different postcards and other um, little materials that I found, and uh, you know, it gives you a little bit of the flavor of when Coney Island was uh, was first opened. And here right. are some. And here are these, these are really like an ash can school painting style. Earlier artists, Walkowitz mm -hmm. was an American modernist who was also an Ashcan painter and portrayed the kind of scene that you started the photos with. Um, Mabel Dwight uh, was an associate of Edward Hopper in the Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney studio. And um, she portrayed, again, Ashcan subjects in the spirit of Robert Henry and John Sloan. And when you deal with a subject like Coney Island, these are the sources but probably the most pertinent is the next one. 
Reginald Marsh. He's the master of Coney Island and deals with the display of human bodies and bathing suits and the crowding and the beach and the and the the spectacle, which is a big attraction. Now, none of these, by the way, are in the exhibition. We're just giving you the. But they're sources the for all the artists who mm -hmm. who um, who are on display, and uh, the most pertinent is Red Grooms in terms of style, because he's more he's his style seems to be adapted by a lot of the other artists. So, mm -hmm. in a way, it's like a coloring book without lining and filled in with solid colors, which is rather like the advertising and the poster art. And you'll notice in the middle of, your, that's the, the steeplechase ride that he depicts Luna Park on the left. And the funny face is the emblem of Coney Island, which was developed by George Tillieu, who was the builder of Coney Island as an amusement park. Mm -hmm. We have that coming up too, because now now we're at the exhibition. So you can see the uh, the paintings that are depicting uh, posters from that time period and a steeplechase rendition. The the yellow circle is the actual one, mm -hmm. a steeplechase uh, ride, and I love all the teeth that are showing. That's it's just. It's so iconic. And then you have a sculpture that's based on that coming up. So now yeah. let's see the next one. Okay, so here's a close up of some of those poster paintings of posters that you could see. And they're, you know, they look like they were just ripped off the wall. And these are all a series that were done by, was done by an artist named Marie Roberts. And you get the real feeling of all the, the different characters in, in these shows. So here's one with, with a whole array of uh, fire, um, fire swallowers and snake ladies and all that kind of thing. And the artist, Marie Roberts, is somebody who has a background in that her father and grandfather or grandmothers, et cetera, all worked in the circus entertainment area on, on Coney Island. And her ancestors going back all come from Red Hook. So she's mm -hmm. part of that that region. Incidentally, Red Hook, where all of this is, is not exactly adjacent to Coney Island. It's on the it's on the coast of Brooklyn, and you have to go through Bay Ridge before mm -hmm. you get over to Coney Island, which is on the south as a barrier island. But uh, again, the, the Serpentine Lady, and tell us about the knickknack. Uh, you know, it took me a while to figure out what it was, but then I realized among all the little little knickknacks on the shelves, there's a, there's a person there who's only three and a half feet feet short, it says. So, you know, it's all different types of people that are going to get your attention. And that's, that's what that is. Yeah, I see that person walking around among the dishes. So I guess yes. it was a display that they made giant dishes. Probably. And this person would walk among them. Yes. It's, it's all things to, uh, you know, titillate the audience. Um, okay. So now here is another artist, Richard Egan, and he does this three-dimensional uh, mixed media installation of a ride that's at the Coney Island Amusement Park called uh, Spook House. And I found a photograph of the actual Spook House that looks like it was uh, taking place in about the 50s. But just to give you an idea how, of how all these artists were taking the flavor of Coney Island and interpreting it in their own ways. And most of them were really um, very whimsical and fun. So here is, I told you there were people walking around and this is one of them. And it's actually the president, the co-president of BWAC, who's Alicia Denninger. And she's dressing obviously as a mermaid and we'll see her artwork a little later, but she's standing with an artist whose name is Stuart Nachmias. And he does these very interesting woodcut slash paper pulp, paper casting pieces. And those are two of his pieces there. And we're gonna show you close-ups of each. So the first one is the cyclone, which which is one of the rides that Franklin pointed out before. And you can see that, um, actually, Franklin, you said the style reminded you of De Brucke. Can you explain that? Yeah, De Brucke is a German expressionist art movement that uh, occurred around 1905, and they were very interested in woodcut art. They were inspired by uh, the early German uh, illustrators who had illustrated the Bible and similar things, very, very simple, almost like folk art. And they had that kind of rough, almost deliberately crude, uh, uh, jagged style, which is characteristic. If you, if you try to work on a wooden block with a carving tool, uh, you have to, to avoid that, you'd have to use very, very fine wood and you'd have to be, have very precise tools. And generally, most of the people who you do woodcut uh, enjoy having a, a more uh, tactile look with texture. 
which mm-hmm. is which this is certainly in keeping. And I find these amazing in that they are prints, and they're prints that use paper pulp, and he uses a mold a molding process, so they actually have a dimension to them, and they have a texture, and he pl- employs a variety of etching processes in combination with woodcut. You see that he's using intaglio and sheen collé. The sheen collé is really a cut out paper and remounted onto another surface. It's almost like a collage with a print method. So he's putting a lot of work into these, but I think the result is very, very good because they are lively, they're jaunty, they -hmm. capture the spirit of the energy of of the subject. Uh, He actually does a very good job of describing how he does this, his whole process. So if you're interested, I'll probably do a fun fact about it in in a few days, but um, he has a uh, about a 12 minute video on his website. So his name is Stuart Nachmias and you can look that up and watch the whole explanation. Okay, and here's one more, which is a um, intaglio print of the same. Same scene. And I just love the movement in that, you know, and he mm-hmm. has a certain quality with line, line. And I think in a way he's a little freer with his line quality than an artist like Red Grooms, who tends to be, you know, a, a little more congested. Yeah. There's an openness and there's a movement here. And I, and I think it captures, again, the spirit of it so that the uh, that, that's the uh, parachute ride on the left, Ferris wheel, cyclone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are the most iconic rides. And I like the way they appear to be animated. In other words, they're, they're coming to life in a way. They undulate, they move, uh, and there's nothing gimmicky in the way he's doing it. He's just captured it with his line quality, which I think is very admirable. I agree. Okay, and continuing on, now you were talking about the steeple chase face, and here is a version of it. Uh, by John Gerard, and it's called Trust Me, which is funny because I look at that and he's the last person I would trust. And as Franklin pointed out the other day, not only does he have fang-like teeth, but also a forked tongue, and his eyes get a little crazy too. So you know, to um, me, he's the uh, the uh, the child of the funny face and Dracula. Oh, <laughs> I think you're right. And it's not two images. It's actually, I'm showing you one on the left with his mouth closed and you can pull it and his mouth opens and you see all the differences in his face when, when that happens. So it's, it's a before and after kind of a, of a show. Now this one, uh, Philomena Mari, Marano, uh, this way out, Franklin, you, you actually had, um, a lot of affection for this one. I think this is very strong because I like the precision of it. I like the clarity. I like the graphic quality. Uh, I think it also has sort of a little bit of meaning because when you go into these rides, you're there for a little while, you're there for uh, excitement, and then they're they're, then they're ushering you out, and you'll use uh, you know your book of tickets and hopefully exhaust that book of tickets and then go buy another book. Okay, and here's another one, Audrey Anastasi, and it's um, aquatic, aquatic right. fitting, um, collage. And it's when you look closely at it, you can see she's using magazine strips to get the illusion of of the water, and the way she looks like she's submerged partially in the water. Because don't forget, Coney Island is a beach. Yeah, I think that's a terrific piece, and my wife Emily is going crazy over this. <laughs> she absolutely loves this. And then Linda says the prior one looks like Leger, which I see it's precisionist and yes. sort of cubist and semi-pop. It also mm-hmm. makes me think a little bit of Stuart Davis. Yes, you're both different, different kind of color, but you know, the, 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 and Leger, Davis, Lichtenstein, they're all the same type of artists, like mm-hmm. like that. Okay, so moving moving along. Uh, oh. Mm. Uh, one this of my favorites, and this is by Alice Degner, who's the uh, mm-hmm. the uh, the uh, the organizer of the show, and she her work is out quite a lot. She actually did a big mural for Nathan's, and uh, this one she's captured the signage repeatedly, which is what you what you get when you're down there. You see it in a, a dozen different uh, incarnations. Yes. Actually, little... um, this is her her painting. Here is a photograph of mm-hmm. what it looked like at one point. And, uh, you know, Franklin and I were commenting, he likes the hot dogs, I like the French fries. This is what mm-hmm. Nathan's is all about. So if you haven't had Nathan's, get it. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so that's Nathan's. And then I felt a need before we leave this exhibition. This is not in the exhibition, but it could have very well have been. And it's by an artist that you know, and it's Franklin himself. And this is, I know, one of your favorites. So explain why you have Zoltan, what do you like about him? Well, <clears throat> I think Zoltan is a universal image. And it doesn't have to be Coney Island or Far Rockaway or Long Beach or Venice, California. There is, Zoltan was mass marketed. So Zoltan is a pop icon in and of himself. And I love the way he has that rather spectral look as he's behind glass and he's got the the the, the crystal ball there. I'm sure my, my Zoltan is probably a little bit of an older Zoltan than the one that is depicted on the right. Um, and I love the the base with those uh, acanthus leaves and so on. It's it's mm. a terrific image. So we're going to end this. So we've been all over Manhattan, Connecticut, Long Island, and and Brooklyn, and now we're um, we're taking a little break because I'm exhausted from all that traveling. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your summer, and uh, we will see you. Thank soon. you, everyone. You're you're the greatest. We love Bye. you. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.